So in this exercise, we'll be creating the assignment service. Here are some objectives from this exercise. First, we'll create a library service builder project using the service builder template. We'll define the assignment entity. We'll define a few service exceptions. We'll make a code review, and then we'll build the service. Here are the steps that we'll be taking in this exercise. We'll create a library service builder project, define and create the assignment entity. We'll define the columns associated with the assignment entity. We'll add the definitions to the service XML file, and then we'll build the service. And so pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and let's get into the exercise. So in this portion of the exercise, we'll be creating the assignment service. So you'll have to open up Library Dev Studio if it's not already running, and then you'll create a new library module project in the gradebook workspace. So I currently have my gradebook workspace open. Now I'll right click and I'll click new library module project right here. I'm going to ask for a project name and we can type gradebook. And then for the project template name, we'll choose service builder. Click next. For the package name, let's call this com library training gradebook. And then we'll click finish. And so after it's created, you'll see that we have the gradebook within the modules folder. It creates the API and service modules for us. We open this back up again. You see a service XML, and this is the main configuration file of a service builder project. It lets you define model entities, data sources, finder methods, and exceptions for your service. You can customize service XML with the graphical designer tool or edit the file's source code directly. And so we'll open the service XML file by double clicking it. Now we're going to switch to the overview. So down here where it says source, this is the view we're currently on. We'll click overview and then it'll look something like this. We'll click service builder in the outline tree. And then for the namespace, we'll type in gradebook. We'll right click on the entity foo in the outline tree. And then we'll click delete. We'll go ahead and create an assignment entity. So we'll click the green plus icon near the right over here to add a new entity. We'll type in assignment for the name field, and then we'll check both the local and remote service. We'll then have to define the columns associated with an assignment. So we'll double click the assignment in the outline tree to open entity properties. We'll click on columns, and then we'll add default columns to get a default set of fields. Now we'll add in a few more columns. So we'll click the green add button. We'll type in title for a name, and then we'll double click the type field for the title column, and then we'll click the browse icon over here on the right side of the field, and then we'll choose a string. We'll edit the column definitions for the assignment entity now. We'll click on the source tab in the editor down here. So we'll see that this looks more like conventional code over here. And then we'll add the rest of assignments column after the title column. And so we'll be typing description and due date. We'll make this type is equal to string. And then we'll add in another column. Name will be equal to due date and type is equal to date. Great, now we'll add definitions to the service XML file. So we'll add the following snippet after the column definitions, but so we'll type in order, we'll have this comment, and then we'll order by, we'll set this attribute to ascending, and then we'll give it an order column, and then we'll be ordering by the title column and go ahead and just close it here. And then after the order definition, we'll add a few finders. And this will help us to filter through some of the entities that we have stored in the database. So we'll make another comment for finders over here, and then we'll type in a finder. The return type, we'll call this collection, and then the name, we'll call this group ID. We'll need a criteria on which to search the finder. So we'll type in finder column. Name is equal to group ID. And then this will be our finder column. So just as a note, references define entity services injected into our service classes. And this helps us to keep the database calls inside a single transaction. We need the group services and library asset services for integrating to the library asset framework for later exercise steps. And so we're going to add in the reference definitions right now after the finder definitions. We'll come down and type in the following following snippet. So I'll make a comment right here, reference to group entity service. The entity will be group right here for the reference package path. We'll set this attribute to com.liferay.portal. And then we'll add in entity services. And then this will be for the integration to asset framework. So we'll add in a few here. Reference, we'll have the entity is equal to asset entry. And then the package path will be com.liferay.portlet.asset. We'll repeat this three times. I'll copy this, and then we'll also need asset link and change the bottom to asset tag. We'll add the following code snippet after the closing tag of entity so down here, exceptions. And then we'll put in a specific exception, assignment validation exception right here. And then we'll save this file, control S, and then we can come up here to source and then click format. 
and then it will automatically format our XML for us. It'll look something like this. Move these extra spaces. So if we do a final code review, we should see few PK fields. This is the primary key field. Audit fields, some of the ones that we defined over here. We'll have the order. Also have the finders right here. We have our references down here to group and then to the asset framework references. And then finally, we define our own custom exception down here. So now we're going to go ahead and click build service. And what we're going to do then is generate the database schema for the service, persistence and caching, as well as local and remote service APIs. So we'll come to the right over here to our Gradle tasks. We'll expand Gradlebook workspace, and then we'll find the build, and then we'll find build service. So we'll run this by double clicking it. You can also run the service generation tasks several ways. You can use the Gradlebook Gradle task over here. You can use the overview panel of the service XML designer down here. You can also find the context menu of the Gradebook service project or the command line using the Liferay workspace Gradle W script. Now we're going to configure and save the dependencies in the Gradebook service modules build.gradle as follows. So we have this, we have the build service. And so we'll be changing this compile project to compile only project.